Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to explore Kirchhoff's laws. There are two Kirchhoff's laws. The first one says that for any node, the sum of all the currents entering the node equal the sum of all the currents leaving the node. In this example, let's say we have this node. We have one, two, three resistors, all three sharing the node. We have current flowing in this direction on this particular, across this particular branch, let's call it I1. We have a current across this branch, let's call it I2, and a current across this branch, let's call it I3. Notice that in this case, there's only one current that is entering this node. It comes from this direction, it's I1 that enters the node, and there's two currents that are leaving the node. Just like you can stand on any intersection, watch the number of cars entering the intersection, and watch the number of cars leaving the intersection, the number of cars entering must always equal the number of cars leaving unless they somehow disappear. Same with charges and therefore same with currents. In this case we can say that the number of currents entering the node, which is I1, must equal the two, the two currents, the sum of the two currents leaving the node. Therefore we can say I1 equals I2 plus I3. And this is an equation that simply stems from the fact that Kirchhoff said that all the currents entering the node equals all the currents leaving the node, which is indeed a fact now. The second rule is, has to do with voltages. Kirchhoff said that if you travel across or around any closed loop from any starting point ending at the same starting point, for any loop, all the voltages added together must add up to zero. Now, when we say all the voltages added together, that means all the voltage rises and all the voltage drops. In this case, since we're traveling with the current, let's say we start from this node, we cross the battery from the negative end to the positive end, we then sum up this voltage. We have a positive voltage here traveling from the negative end to the positive end. We then travel across this resistor that would be a voltage drop. We travel across this resistor, that would be a voltage drop. Remember, the voltage across any resistor is equal to the current in the circuit, in this case I, times the size of the resistor, in this case R1 and R2. So the sum of all the voltages, starting from this node right here, is equal to the volts across the source, minus the voltage drop across the resistor, which is the current, times the first resistor, minus the voltage drop across the second resistor, which is I times R2, and that therefore must add up to zero, because Kirchhoff rule says you add up all the voltages as you travel around any given loop, any closed loop, they must always add up to zero. To get a better feel for what happens across a resistor, it does depend what direction you travel relative to the current. For example, let's say that we're traveling around the loop, we're traveling in this direction from left to right across the resistor, which happens to be the same direction as the current flow in that particular branch. Therefore, we experience what we call a voltage drop. The voltage is higher on the left side as it is com compared to the right side of this branch. Therefore, when we travel around the loop in that direction, we have a voltage drop, and so we call that a negative voltage. However, if we travel in the opposite direction, let's say we go around the loop in the opposite direction, we're traveling from right to left, but the current flows from left to right, so now we're traveling in the opposite direction of the current. When we travel across the resistor, we experience a voltage rise. We know that the voltage is higher on this side as it is compared to this side, the left side, or I should say the right side. Therefore, when we travel from the negative end of the resistor to the, net, to the positive end, meaning that the potential or the voltage is higher here compared to here, we travel in this direction, we see a voltage rise, and then we would have to add a positive voltage instead of a negative voltage. In the next several videos, we'll do some examples of how to deal with Kirchhoff's rules and laws. In this case, you can see that you do have to take, uh, be careful when you go around the loop to see if the direction of travel around the loop is in the same direction as the current or in the opposite direction to determine if you should add the voltage or, or subtract the voltage across that particular device or across that particular branch. Again, in summary, the two laws are for any node, the sum of the currents entering the node must equal the sum of the currents leaving the node. And the second law, for any loop, for any closed loop, I should call it a closed loop. It's implied that it's a closed loop, but just in case you're wondering, for any closed loop, 
when you go all the way around the loop and you add up all the voltages as you travel around the loop, the sum of all the voltages must add up to zero. Those two rules are very powerful rules which we can use to analyze all kinds of circuits. So we'll show you some examples in the videos to come.